You're listening to Punisher Waterfowls, the Union 0430 podcast. Brought to you by Real Geese Decoys, the most technologically advanced silhouette decoy on the market. First Light, the best hunting gear on the planet. Go farther, stay longer. And Duck Lander Calls, tradition, education, and quality. Built to hunt. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Union 0430 podcast, episode 179. Yep. And, um, you know, we got a guest on this week. So um, we're going to we're going to jump right into it. So we've got Eric Stella from the decoy daddy. I got it right because I fucked it up. <laughs> I fucked it up last week and I said the other name. And as I said it, Craig is messaging me and he's saying and. He's messaging me. No, you're saying it wrong. You're saying it wrong. And then you message me, and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> one idiot. job. One, jo- one you know job. What? One job. It's yeah. not, it's not, it's too, uh, it's too easy to mess up. So, dude, I like, I've got to purposely like take a second and make sure I get the fucking name right. Yeah. It, it's just too well, close. You're like one of those old fellas, like Don Jerry or something. It doesn't matter how the name's supposed to be pronounced. You're going to say how you want to anyway. Well, yeah. this is true. This is true. This it's, is- it's like Mario's last name. There's no L in Friendy. Oh, I didn't know that. Just blew his yeah. mind. We, we yeah. just let you. We just let you run with it every time. Mario friendly. It's not friendly. There's no L. Oh, the only L is the one on your forehead. Fuck you, Bill. Good job, oh. Phil. That was a good one. <laughs> that was, that was a good one. You've been fucking holding on and waiting for that one for a while. Buddy, all day. <laughs> Not really. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I do have to I before we get going too too far here, I do have to thank our show sponsors, um, Real Geese, which is awesome because you know we're we're sponsored by Real Geese and and Craig is such a great dude and and you know, talk to Craig and I'm like, so what do you think of bringing on a, another silhouette company and he's like no no absolutely he said do it he said competition is good and and people need options so he was like 100 percent do it so um got to give a big thanks to craig mintz from real geese and bobby hayes from Ducklander call and the whole team over at first light and of course the voice of the union 0430 mr jeff coates um thank you uh for that and to anybody if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel or our podcast please do um because it really do make a difference when it when it comes to us talking to people and we're talking about uh how many people listen and and watch the show so thank you so much for that so we'll we'll get on with it so as usual mark's coming to us from outside embrum nova scotia philly is in port perry craig is in wabashine eric where are you at buddy I'm in my fucking garage. Nice. <laughs> I'm in Hamilton. I'm in Hamilton. The hammer. In and hammer. The, and the hammer. Oh. Yeah. Great in the thick of it. Now. <laughs> um, I, I yeah, see the roof in Hamilton, eh? What's yeah. That? We're running this out of the garage right now. Oh, I shingle the roof in Hamilton. Th- that yeah. is where all big businesses start. <laughs> For every. Yeah. For sure. Every bundle of shingles we put up, we drank a couple of beer. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then after about six or eight bundles of shingles, we had to stop doing the roof and go to yeah. the shed. Yeah, because everyone yeah. was drunk. Everyone was drunk. Um, Realized they were I, on the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, I did want to get right into it, though, Eric. You know, um, you were, and and I remember during the refuge, I had done a video and and talked about you being there and in, in, in the refuge, and I had talked about how you're this new business that's on the scene here in Ontario, and and you are getting a lot of attention, um, and a lot of positive attention. Um, I don't think you're getting any negative attention. I think it's all positive. Sure, it's um, coming. <laughs> but, but no, you know what? Maybe not, dude. Like if you haven't hit anything negative yet you're probably not going to yeah because yeah probably not because the haters yeah. would have been jumping over you jumping all over you by now um 100 we're, we're uh i think getting getting into the refuge was a fantastic opportunity for us to really get out there early 
in our we're like we're in our infancy essentially mm-hmm. right now. So being able to get in front of so many people in such a positive environment, I, I, it really separated us. I think. Well, and we we're seeing some traction. Well, and listen, like everybody and everybody there that week, and Phil and Merck and and Craig, you guys were there, and you know, like there was a lot of there was a lot of people through that area but you were consistent the entire four days. Like you had people hanging around your booth the entirety uh, of that Toronto sportsman show. Yeah. So, you know what, without, you know, without you getting too personal or, or anything like that, you know, what were the conversations that, that fellas and, and girls were having with you when they were coming up and talking to you about your product? Like what was the bit? What a was a the lot of it was, um, you know, Oh, we've seen you guys on Instagram. You know, we've seen the products and it's hard to get a gauge on the quality of the product until you're holding it, right? So Absolutely. we had some orders before the show. Um, yeah. But at the show, once people, you know, being completely new, um, people coming in to say, you know, we saw it, but we weren't sure about it. And now once they felt it and they held it and I got to meet them, and I got to like kind of explain our story. Um, people loved it. Like the reception was fantastic. And people, you know, they appreciated the... Um, the attention to detail that we, that we have in them. Uh, yeah. And then the innovative, like the products, like the, uh, the hook. I, that, I, that was, that's amazing. Like, I got to tell I, you that that hook is, I got, uh, yeah, that was, I'm going to show you guys something real quick. Let me grab it. Yeah. Here. It's yeah, yeah. Hey, and everybody that's watching, um, sorry to those that are just listening, but if you're watching and you see where Eric is working out of right now, um, just, keep a mental <laughs> picture of this because in 10 yeah. years it's going to be a fucking in 10 years yeah. it's going to be a warehouse with a proper office so i um, hope so yeah this is uh, my goal today was to come home and clean it but we're uh we're doing a whole bunch of other stuff in life right now so getting into here to organize stuff i was like fuck it this is what we're living with this is how we're doing yeah, it so yeah, that's it um, man. that's it i gotta show you guys the prototype for the hook is that out so of I, a piece of uh insulation styrofoam. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think styrofoam yeah. So I drew it on. I drew it on paper, put it on cardboard, cut the cardboard, put the cardboard over this, and then I was able to carve this out. Right. So that's how I pitched my idea, and I said, "This is what I want." You know, put your hand in here, go by, bang, 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 couple of revisions back and forth, and that's what we landed with. So we were we were super super stoked um, to be able to to produce this how we did first shot basically. And it was exactly what I wanted in the product. Yeah. Um, and this was, you know, what I, what I told a lot of people to show is <laughs> I'm not an inventor by any means, but I'm lazy. I'm lazy. And everyone's hunted over a million oh, silhouettes. And, and, you know, when you're picking up silhouettes, you get 10, 12, 15 in your hand. They're jumping all over. They're falling. Yeah. And it, at one point during the pack up, and t- correct me if I'm wrong, if you guys don't do this, but we do, is at one point during the dismantle somebody's job is to sit at the bag and unfuck the decoys and put them in and sort it out because eventually once you're bringing that's right it's just you you can mess. never fit them all back in properly just no, by throwing no them no in. it's no. and you got three guys standing over the bag staring at each other <laughs> <clears throat> so <laughs> this this hook this hook came is you can go into the bag scoop up 30 of them then go and put them out and then at the end of the hunt you just go scoop them up and you plop them in the bag and you just push them off the hook it's it's yeah. such a simple stupid idea but we're lazy you, so yeah. <laughs> does no, it come I'm... in bottom land <laughs> <laughs> no because all the all the camos are uh they're they're all patented that's how we that's how we created our hat um the, mm. the camo patterns are all patented you can't really just like throw your logo on it right so no, um when i started looking at, yeah right you got to give them so i said all right, well, I made it this far. I'll just make my own camo and see what happens. So we made that duck camo hat. I yeah. don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah, I see. Um, a, guy, a lot of guys like that. And, you know, we went back and forth a little bit on colors and stuff. And uh, that's where we landed on. And we were super stoked. And to have that kind of from afar, you don't really know what it is. But when you're close up, yeah, you see it. And it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of neat. So another thing that we're pretty proud yeah, of. That, you know, right? yeah, it's de- yeah, definitely. What'd you say, Craig? Yes, it's something different. Yeah, it is. It is something. It's something totally different, um, which I think is is what fell like. There, there's a very large 
community of people out there that I think that's what they want. They just want to do something different every once in a yeah. while. And they don't want to be the same. Like not everybody is like Phil where everything has to be in fucking bottom land. Hey, my, <laughs> my hat's cash. Well, your hat's cash. Yes. Um, <laughs> so between cash but and bottom land, um, everything's better in bottom. Land. <laughs> yeah. That was what, that was the original, right? Bottom land was the original camel pattern for uh, one of them. Yeah. One for of Mas- yeah. For Mossy Oak, I think it was was um, the original. Fuck, who's gonna say something? Oh, Eric, for the love of God, if you like become like a kajillionaire, like this blows up and you like bankrupt die bomb, <laughs> that little pink foam piece of plastic, whatever you want to call it, like the original prototype. Yeah. Piece, Buddy, you gotta save that and stick that to the wall. Oh, that like, got it. Frame it. Should, yeah, this is where framed, I yeah. started. Was this stupid <laughs> yeah. little piece of foam? Yeah, you this is it. That. Well, that's it. No, but it's very true. Like I remember watching uh, Duck Dynasty back in the day, and I remember they found uh, Phil Robertson's original sketches of of his duck calls, and oh, and wow. yeah, so they found it was in a like typical phil robertson well or i i assume typical phil robertson not not something that was scripted for tv and maybe it was but they found it in a fucking shed on his property and it was just orig- shelled away yeah and it was his original sketches and then there was like the uh like the autocad like the autocad drawings of yeah. of his fucking of his tone board and stuff like that so which was yeah. which was really cool right to, to look back on yeah. something and say fuck look look at where it started and look at where especially it is so many years later after they had made it right yeah and they absolutely. completely forgot about where they like almost where they started where like he probably doesn't remember that first initial drawing like i and you're right i probably one day this probably won't be a thought of my brain but you're absolutely right i should throw it in like a shadow box fucking yep. right you should <laughs> just if it goes somewhere they're just going to say we'll see it in like 40 years on an auction in a shadow box or something. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd be cool. So, it's, you, um, yeah. So, you talked about, you know, people coming up to you at the show, and, and I'm sure it's not just at the show. It's anytime you talk to anybody, especially, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but being a new guy on the on the block now, like everybody's reaching out to you, right? Like everybody wants to know, okay, what are you all about? Where, you know, a million different questions because you're the new yep. kid on the block, right? So hey, can I be a staffer? <laughs> yeah, lots of that. No, lots of that. Fuck, I can just do you have an ambassador hey, program. You, hey, yeah, yeah, do you have an ambassador program? Or the best one was, hey, I just signed up for your ambassador program. Oh, really? Oh, that was a good one. That. I'm like, yeah, that's not me, guys. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> like we're not running it. And, um, a lot of I, I I yielded a lot of those conversations. Um, and our, our response to that is like, and, and, and I've had this conversation with my wife and stuff. And the reason we're not running an ambassador program, sorry to go off topic. No, no, no. Keep going. Um, the reason we're not running an ambassador program is like, we're brand new. So there's a lot of people haven't shot over our decoys. We have, right. and, and we don't have a brand worth representing for a lot of people. Right. And so the guys that are reaching, Oh, I want to be, you know, I want to be a brand ambassador. It's like, you know, have you even seen our decoys? Have you felt them? Have you had a full conversation with me? Do you know where my head's at? Because I know in in that position, like if I'm going to align myself with a company and vice versa, if I'm going to align myself with somebody who wants to represent my company, I'm responsible for your actions. Mm-hmm. So people that, people that, you know, when the time comes and it will come, I'm sure, right. It, it, there's a, there's a grand reach. There's a, there's a purpose for those. I, I get that. But let me create a brand that people want to be a part of. Let me create more of this shit, more buzz mm-hmm. and, 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 and that people want to, you know, hook into yeah. and sink their teeth into. And then we, you know, then we get, you start to vet people and whatever, because what I worry about and what you see is, um, if you're repping my t-shirt, you got a sticker on your truck, you got this, you got that, and, and you get an impaired, you, you get whatever, you know, it can go south as quickly as possible. Like, like, well, it, like that, it'll right? go, it'll go south a lot quicker than, than it went north. I can tell yeah. you that. Yeah. So it's one of those things where like, we're taking our time and, and sure there's that little bit of a, mm, we should just do it. Oh, we should just do it. But I'm trying to, trying to keep that under wraps because we need to stay to our roots and our integrity is, is 
we, we need to build a brand that people want to be a part of. And I want people to look at us and look at our decoys and, and, and you know, a picture of a goose is a picture of a goose. Um, but I want them to look at us and go, Hey, I like your brand. I like your integrity. I like your, um, your vision and where you're headed. And I want to be a part of the bigger picture. Those are the people that I want to be in my camp. Um, and I think that's very important. Yeah. You're going to have uh, so people show up along the way that are going to be full supporters of you. Yeah. And yeah. they're going to, they're going to be dedicated hunters and, and, and I'm, I'm guessing people who support you who already purchased your product are going to be the kind of people you're going to want on board, not yeah. someone who's come along for a free ride. Yeah. And we've got a, yeah, tons yeah. of that. Eh? Like I want to be an ambassador and, blah, 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 and you know, or send me, if you send me five dozen, I'll take pictures for you. Oh Jesus. Oh yeah. Well, that's like, Craig. That's Craig Lalonde. That's what Craig does. <laughs> Craig goes around <laughs> everywhere trying to fucking get free shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, I, I gotta get that the discount codes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I gotta get yeah. that in there because uh uh Craig Lalonde is the I don't know the anti ambassador, I would say. With yeah. is that a fair is that a fair statement, Craig? I, I would say yeah. you're an anti and ambassador because you you just don't want anybody like you don't want anybody thinking that you're doing it to get free shit. Yeah. And it's like, for me, it's like growing up, it was just kind of whatever I could afford or just whatever kind of came, you know, came around. So I've never, I've never like just decked myself out with, with a certain brand or whatever. And I was going to say too, like, if you've got these people jumping at you before you're even offering anything or before you've really got a, a solid brand, it's like, well, what's that tell you about them? Right? Like exactly. they're just, they're just jumping into it for themselves and their own motivations. And that's the kind of stuff like my, my, myself personally, I just, I can't handle. Yeah. No, hundred percent. That's where, that's where we're at. Like we don't want to be farmed. We don't want to be farmed. Yeah. We're, we're a, a small young business. we got all of our own money into this. Um, yeah. More than, more than originally anticipated. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that's always <laughs> the case. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, no. Like you can start, you can do this with a couple of grand. Yeah. Like, no, fuck. yeah. Like you fuck. can't. Are going to see you on um, Dragon's Den soon? Or? No, I wouldn't want to be farmed like by those guys either. <laughs> um, Just get fisted, get fisted by a dragon? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but th th like we haven't, we, we spent a lot of time, you know, a year ago, a year and a half ago on this show where that was a common theme of something that we talked about a lot was was the brand ambassadors and the pro staff and the people that were knocking on doors and asking, you know, so very similar, you know, we had Rusty Heron on one time and a guy wrote Rusty and was talking about Rusty's duck calls and how awesome they were. And, and he wanted to get on board with Rusty and Rusty don't fucking doesn't make, make duck calls. <laughs> doesn't make duck calls, you know, and then therefore yeah. you get a guy that reaches out, Hey, have I, I signed up for your ambassador. No, so you haven't even taken the time to yeah. to know to know. And listen, I'm not throwing shade, and I guess I am, but uh, good on you if that's what you want to do. But you can't expect a a company to to start fucking doing backflips and sending stuff to you if you don't yeah. even have if you can't even know the name of the company and yeah. you're. And and this is coming from me, someone that butchered your fucking name on the last episode, and you were <laughs> and you were in the in the refuge with me, right? But um, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is, man. But I tell you, you can look at it in in a number of different ways, uh, but look at it with a glass half full type of mentality that it's a good thing. So obviously, people are noticing you, um, and they're buying into the buzz, right? So there, there's yep, a buzz, yep. there's a buzz coming on about decoy daddy. And yeah, there definitely uh, is for sure. And so therefore people are, people want to be part of that buzz. They want to be part of yeah. this new and up and coming business. That's, that's, you know, that's doing very, very well for itself. And, and like I said, there, there's a lot of buzz for you. So, but, yeah. um, I want to get back to, you know, what you had said when you were talking about in, in the refuge, you know, people were asking about your story and stuff. It's like, I want to know your story because I don't know your story. I didn't get a chance <clears throat> yeah. to really chat yeah. with you when we were at the we've, refuge. We've got a, I mean, I think everybody, I think we have a pretty boring story. Like I started hunting, um, six, seven years ago. Like I met my, my group of buddies and they all, they all hunted. I didn't hunt. I just fished. So we went fishing. That's when I met them. I met them fishing. And um, 
you know, we got really close and my, my buddy, Matt, uh, he's, uh, was it, um, bands and spurs on Instagram. Yep. He's like, go get a gun. You know what I mean? Like we're going to go bird hunting. And I was kind of like, I don't have anybody in my family that's ever hunted. I'm the first. And I was like, okay, whatever. So I went out, got a gun and, um, it's the first, the first birds I ever shot was a, uh, was I, I doubled on, on black ducks. I got Jesus. two black ducks. It was my first, my first kill. And I was like, damn. Mine too. <laughs> but I didn't, I, it, I didn't double on them, but my first bird was a black duck. Sorry. Yeah. It, it pretty, it was pretty cool. And I was like, shit. And then, and that's when you realize you're stuck, right? Yeah. When you get that first kill and like with your, with your buddy, it's just, a, it's a fantastic, fantastic time. Um, so that, that's when I, I, you know, I picked up hunting and, I, and when I go into stuff, I bury myself in it. And then it was like any weekend I could go, I was gone. Right. In the afternoon, I was gone. If we could do a turkey, like I hunted every day, I stocked the shit out of this one turkey on this property and, um, and called him Big Dick Rick, BDR was <laughs> for short. He was a uh, big, big Tom. And big uh, I Rick. chased him around like a complete asshole for the entire season. And I got him on the last day. Wow, which was for you. It couldn't have been a better story, but anyways, um, so I got into that, and then you know, as we get into waterfowl, and you bury yourself in a waterfowl, and you buy every you, everybody here is going to know, right? You buy a dozen decoys, a dozen decoys, a dozen decoys. All of a sudden, you have a garage full of shit and a mortgage payment on all of it. Yeah, and um, so we were sitting in the blind last year, and we were like just bitching about the price of decoys, and I was like, I wonder if we could do this. I, you know, I did some research and, um, one thing led to the next. I was like, okay. So we kind of organized all that. And then, you know, somebody asked me, how'd you come up with decoy daddy? It was like out of the blue. It just hit me. And like, oh, I was in bed, I think. And I just got up one day and I was like, decoy daddy. Like, that's just a fun, a fun name. And like, I'm, I'm the kind of guy where any situation that I can make funnier, I try and do it. Like, that's just who I am. Like, I'm super, it takes a lot to irritate me. And, um, I thought it was a fun name. So I was like, yeah, that'll work, whatever. So now we're kind of building this brand and, uh, it seems to be working. People think it's funny. There's so many people walk by decoy daddy. Oh, that's hilarious. And then, it, you know, I just shot the shit with them. And, um, yeah, so we, that's, that's kind of what brought us to that point. Like I'm not, I haven't been hunting for 30 years by any means, no crazy background. Just, um, I love it. I enjoy it. It's, it's a passion of mine and being able to be so close and have, have so much control over what we're doing and i love that i love being able to innovate and and coming up with the hooks and our bags right with the uh with the metal clasps yeah. like these guys right so here yeah so i don't know if you saw it even, but like these are all metal right so yeah being able to those. being able to, to to make changes like that essentially to the industry because i know what's going to happen everyone knows what's going to happen people are going to jump on board with that because the amount of people that have broken two hundred dollar bags and clips and then now they're garbage or because you know they don't have somebody to put a new one on or what have you or they don't want to deal with it right the yeah. industry is going to follow that and it's going to be kind of cool because here i am sitting in my garage and i bet you there's going to be big companies in the future that are going to be changing their ways because of some asshole out of hamilton <laughs> very true and 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 it is like no I, I, you don't have to explain it any differently. Like, like it is true when, when something works and uh, what is it? They say, uh, imitation is the best form of flattery. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so yeah, take, take the, take those good things. Uh, I, I laugh at people when, you know, there's, there's a couple groups that, that Phil and I belong to on, on social media where, um, you know, there's some companies that just get fucking ripped apart and, and they say, well, you're just copying some, everybody is copying somebody. There's yeah. no, like, well, in, there's, in fairness, one company, that's all they do. Well, I, yeah, I get it. it. It is. I, I get it. That's <laughs> all they do. Um, but everybody is copying everybody. Just like, well, you, the, the Cabela's the very, Bass Pro. Well, yeah, Cabela's Bass Pro, like the, the prime example, and, and and this isn't me hating on Cabela's and Bass Pro, but it's their mo. Bring in something from another company, and if it sells well, and then 
Cabela's wants that price lowered so they make more money off it. And then the company goes, well, no, I can't do that because you're eating into my profits then. And then Cabela's just goes, okay, well, fine. We'll fucking make our own just like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That's just, that's just the way that the waterfowl, I, I would assume that's like that everywhere with fishing, anything outdoors related. Like you can only be innovative so much, right? Yeah. See, but these yeah. companies, I'm, I'm going to yeah. go back on this one. Cabela's and Bass Pro, Bellas especially, made their brand on selling stuff that hunters wanted. Yes. Oh, that's where you could go to get all the stuff from all the different companies. Cabela's now and Bass Pro will copy whoever's product they want. Yep. And the best, it's never as good as the best stuff. No, never ever. No. It's always cheaper. It's, it's always the cheapest. But you buy it because it's there now. Yeah. So. Well, and there's and and the other thing, and and I do think this. Um, and again, people can disagree with me, but go to Cabela. It's easy to go to Cabela's, right? Because it's it's all right there. It, it's there. You don't have to do the research. If you need a fucking ground blind, you get a ground blind. You need decoys, you get decoys. You need a yeah. a lanyard, you get a land. Everything is right there, and then you just fucking pull it off the shelf, and there's no. There's no thinking you can do everything all under one roof, right? Um, yep. Well, so, in my and, case, and I ordered new boots this week <laughs> from Cabela's. From, from Cabela's, yeah. They're muck yeah. boots, though. Mm. Well, we had, and Eric, this is, I don't know if you've listened to our show a lot, but this is how this show goes, and we're, we'll be all over the fucking place. Oh, um, yeah. But last Say week, ADHD in us. Yeah. <laughs> well, 100%. Last, well, earlier this was it earlier this week or last week that Merck dropped that fucking oh. lacrosse is selling boots at like 80% off. And we were like, what? So we're all on these pages. And I'm like, it's not loading for me. It's not loading for me. And Craig's yeah, like, it loads breaks. for me. And I'm like, what the fuck is going? How come I can't get on this site? And now yeah, it was a scam. Yeah. It's a scam site that was said it's called La lacrosse boots, Canada, but yeah. there was two, boots S's. Had two S's. Yeah. So, uh, and everything on the site was 135 bucks. Yeah. It what a matter. steal. Yeah. Yeah. $800 waiters. Yeah. 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 What a steal. Bucks. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a, that's a shit show. Eh? We live in. It's so easy for these websites to come up and fucking yeah. pump your credit card in. I got jammed at Christmas time buying stuff for my wife. Did you really? Oh, yep. I got, I got my money back. Like, yeah, I had to get, yeah. get a new credit card, whatever else. But yeah. Oh, right. Like, I, I Some got, of them I just go going on, right? Like it, to try and find the differences between them, it's near impossible. It yeah, it yeah. is. Well, in they that do a case, good job. They definitely do a good job. In that case, so they just added an S on the boots. Yeah. Like, and you don't well, care because you're looking at the price. No. The lacrosse website is lacrosse footwear. Yeah. It's oh. Not lacrosse boots. Oh. Oh. No. Okay. That's another thing. But Eric, one thing you've got going for you is you got some ingenuity going on. You got you're creating things that are your own. That's so, right. So and like you said, like the boys are saying, imitation is a serious form of flattery. But uh if you can keep doing those kind of little things, I mean it can it, it can only be good for you. Well yeah, yeah. I tell you're you putting out your own ideas, you're not yes, everybody everybody has a decoy bag, so yeah, you have a decoy bag, but you're you're making it better by putting your own little innovations in it, right? Yeah. Something like else we changed on our bags, which was kind of cool because at the show you got to I got to do the whole demo. Um, our bags are are a specific height as well as our straps, so it doesn't matter how tall you are. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm telling this to guys that are looking at me like this, right? They're yeah, five foot three, five foot four, and I'm talking to guys that are six foot four at the same time. Doesn't matter how, how tall you are, the bags are designed. They actually position the so the bottom of the bag is always just above your knee. So when you're walking with a bag full of five, six dozen decoys, you're not kicking it with your with your calf. Yep. Yep. I have the bag that everybody else has, and it is the biggest pain in the ass. And you're walking through, you got your if you're not wearing waders, but you're wearing all your gear, it's cold as shit. You're walking through the corn and you're kicking your fucking decoy bag the whole time and you're trying to lift it up, right? You're lifting it up, lifting it up. What a pain in the ass. So that was one of the things that we we implemented into these bags 
just as default because it, it's a pain in the ass. It, it's, yeah. it's, and then when I'm telling guys this, they're like, oh, yeah, like that makes sense. And like some little guys are going, you know, some shorter guys are going, yeah, well, I'm only five feet, right? Yeah. Put the bag on their shoulder and where does it sit? Right above their knee. And then they get that oh shit moment. So we had we had a good handful of guys right then and there go, all right, I'll, I'll order a bag. Right. So that would that was really cool to see. And um, again, like I said earlier, like a picture of a goose is a picture of a goose. Sometimes you're going to have different board, a little bit of a different image, a different flocking, this, that, whatever. A goose is a goose. Um, we're just trying to do things different enough that people are, will remember that and go, yeah, yeah, these guys did that. So when somebody goes and they go to copy that and they go to replicate it, and maybe they put their own little spin on it, like something like this. I don't know what someone else is going to do. Add a carabiner, a clip, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I thought about it. And we didn't because once you start adding springs and fucking anything mechanical, it's going to break. Mm -hmm. This is this is a dumb, dumb product. This is a dumb, no, dumb product. It's, no moving parts. No moving parts. If you break this, you've had a weird day. <laughs> you know no, what I mean? And for those who haven't seen... Eric has the floating decoy daddy hook. Yeah, yeah, that's the new one that we just that we're just launching. Like, we're gonna put on the website in the next couple of days, and that one is is very similar. It's all aluminum, and this this is all gonna be have a foam cap on it, so it's all gonna be like a rounded foam grip. Yeah, um, and it'll float. So if you're in a boat, it's longer. It's about I think it's 22 inches of the measurement. So you'll be able to, instead of having to get your boat right on or your canoe, your kayak, whatever you're shooting out of, and having to dip your hand in the water to grab the, the decoy or the, the, the uh, decoy line, you'll be able to use that hook and just scoop, 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 I think into the boat. For a lot of the kayak hunters, because like kayaks, like you don't want to be leaning too much. You're on the risk of tip and falling out, whatever the case may sure. be. For kayak hunters, that new fl floating decoy hook, that's going to be the cat's ass. Yeah, yes, I, yeah, we're I, stoked for that. I go in my canoe on like the southern end of Georgian Bay, so it's can be pretty big at times. And you know, you're trying to no just thanks towards you with a paddle and stuff like that, right? And, yeah, and yeah, having something a little more helpful would uh, be a lot safer if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, that's that's all we're trying to do. Like, it's a pretty simple industry at the end of the it day, is. right? You're um, right. so being able to come up with these little, these little things, I think it will set us apart and then. When somebody goes to replicate that, people will be like, ah, you know, that's, oh, yeah, Decoy Daddy. Like, they started that. Like, they did that a year ago, and this is the follow-up to it. So, um, it'll happen. It'll happen just like everybody. You know, there was there, somebody was the first guy for everything. And when I'm going through all this stuff, we're obviously searching patents. And if you've ever got time, you got to go on Google. I think it's Google.patents. And you just type in hunting decoy. The shit that people have invented over the years is decoy, like like rigs going back into the 80s and 90s and like just bizarre ideas. But you're like, hey, that'd be kind of cool if you had it. And they have patents today. Yeah. That, uh, you know, it, it's 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 pretty neat to see um, all the stuff that really is available. Our market's kind of choked out a little bit. So being able to bring some different stuff to the table is, 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 is a lot of fun and, and people love it. I can't say yeah, enough. I, I think that is a, a real good point on what Merck brought up with that ingenuity thing and, and what you're doing, right? Because playing on this, this whole thing where everybody is imitating everybody and you can only innovate so much, um, the only way to get ahead is, is to add those little creature comforts, right? Because, yep. you know, to a, to a, to a guy or a girl that's just getting started in the waterfowling world, well, they haven't been out. They haven't had that decoy bag smacking against their calves yeah. or, or kicking it or or trying to pull 500 fucking silhouettes out of the ground at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? Like, So they don't have that experience. But then there's another group of people that they're just look, they're looking for something that's going to save them 10 minutes on set up oh, outfitters and, right outfitters that are running silos fucking me like Fuck. i'm not even an outfitter but like if i can save five minutes if i get five more minutes to sit in the sit in the blind before first light and just sit there and have my coffee and and just relax and make sure everything is is squared away that means a lot to me 
yeah, j- just yeah. that five minutes it do it means a lot to me and i know it means a lot to a lot of other fellows too so that that's yeah. something but the one thing and you haven't talked about it yet and and normally i wouldn't bring it up but you had it at the at the refuge so i will bring it up was those was those waterproof bags and i'm going to tell you that that is yeah. something decoy bags don't get me excited um blind bags don't get me excited um but fucking waterproof bags that gets me excited with tape zippers yeah. tape seams um when there's molly on it that shit gets me excited because now yeah. now that's something that that's the next stage for me right like okay yeah. i i need i need to have fuck like when i was using my boat all the time i had a bag of an extra suit of clothes that was always up in the bow of the boat just in case yeah. right because you never fucking yeah. know and and you needed yeah. to have that you need to keep that and, that, and that's exactly why i was i went down that route with waterproof bags and you can go and get a regular backpack camo whatever yeah but i said fuck that because once you put your that extra pair of socks in it and then you go to put them on and they're sopping wet what a day ruiner what a day room oh. right off the bat. So so being able to produce, to make those bags um, and design them and have so much input on them and, and really get to mold them to what we want, is it's a lot of fun. I had no idea this was going to be so much fun. And um, cool to bring that to people at, you know, pay a good price yeah, and local. Like it, it's coming right out of us. So we're, we're, we're really excited to be able to do that stuff. And uh, it's just all based off of experience. Like when we're hunting, Oh, this sucks. Like, how do we fix this? And now mm-hmm. every single day we're looking at, we, I look at everything a little bit different is I'm not the only guy struggling with this mm-hmm. or not. Like I'm not the only one that hated picking up silos. I hate picking up hard bodies. Yeah. Everyone hates picking up hard bodies. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the, the hook is just, that's our, the start of it. That's just the mm-hmm. start of it. I, I think we're going to do a lot more. If I Fun, can cool give stuff. you, if I can give you some advice, it'll be this: Do not go to the tractor supply company and buy a shitload of grain bags and throw your sticker on them and start selling them for eighty dollars. Yeah, didn't that uh, start some shit? <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> did it ever! Did it ever start some shit? The um, emotions that that <laughs> fucking pulled out of grown men. Is fantastic, dude. But but that goes fanboys. But that goes to show you where the majority, where the majority of the hunters, the majority of the the customers, the ones that are spending money, that goes to show you that hey, listen, something new and shiny is cool. But listen, don't try to take advantage of me and don't try to get my money for the sake of getting my fucking money because I can go see a farmer and get those things for fucking free before they yeah. burn them at the end of the season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just so, to get him out of his way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, if you don't know what we're talking about here, um, you live under a rock. <laughs> yeah. In the water, <laughs> in the waterfowling world. Yeah. You're living under a rock because that, yeah. that, that certainly kicked up a lot of, picked up a lot of stink. Uh, but and and you're right, Mark, as it should, because people call them out. And this is and this is, you know, you take the good with the bad with the internet, right? So the internet and, and social media and all those things can grow a business, but it can also fucking backfire you if you're doing something stupid or bullshit or shady or, or oh, whatever. Fuck. The internet's right? the worst thing that was ever invented. Uh, I don't know, man. Internet porn was that's that was a fucking game changer. Pretty neat. <laughs> I'm telling you, I wish it was around when I was fucking 14 years old. I can my tell my you. internet showed up in the mail. It was called AOL. <laughs> AOL, yeah. Well, fuck the, the the kids these days will never know the struggles. Mm-hmm. I just want I wanted to say, Eric, like, uh, and you'd already touched on it. it. Was one question I had was, uh, so I just wanted to comment on like you going ahead with this, right? Because it's one thing to have an idea, but then to be able to kind of start moving forward and putting your own money into something and making it successful already and see yeah. some, of the, some of the cool ideas coming out of it. It's uh, it's not something I could imagine myself ever doing, like trying to, uh, you know, take those chances like that and move forward for the sake of an idea really, but good for you. It's, it's awesome yeah. to see. No, I appreciate it. It's been, uh, it was one of those things where I, I tell us, I tell this to my fiance all the time. I'd rather try and fail than not try and 
and watch someone else do it in front of you and go, fuck, I could have done that, right? Um, you you miss really cool. 100% of the chances you don't take. You do. And you know what else? Wayne Gretzky. You know what else? No plan survives first contact. Fucking so nice. That a boy. We are, we, you know, we're so far we've been pretty lucky with, you know, things have worked out to our, to our favor, but thinking like that has helped us a lot um, anticipate problems that we're going to have. So I, I think we're doing a good job of it right now. And it, it's scary. I'll tell you, it's, it's scary because when you, when you have tens of thousands of dollars dumped into this, it um, it's a little Makes bit of a butt puckering butt moment. <laughs> See, yeah. there we go. Makes your butt puckering. It does. And it makes you, it makes you work a little harder, right? It makes you work harder because I'm in this enough that I can't fail. You know what yeah. I mean? I got a family that relies on me and yeah. I got to make this work. And, and I'm fortunate that, I have the support from my from my fiance. She's if you guys look on the Instagram, you can literally see where her name Sierra, where she stepped in and started making posts on the on the page because they're way better than what I was pumping out. <laughs> She's right? Social media advisor. There yeah, like and, and like I didn't know she had this these abilities. I was like, where the fuck did you learn to do this? She's like, I ain't mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so no, it's it's cool. I I appreciate that. Um, to you know, to to be able to do this and it, it's going, it's happening, and um, meeting some wicked people like in the refuge. You understand, Damien? Like I didn't know anybody. I right. talked to you over Instagram. Yeah. I didn't know Rich. I, I didn't know Marco. I you know, and yeah. I m- met Marco over other reasons, like we know. But um, I didn't know anybody there. And by right. the time of the by the end of the weekend, fuck, it was like I, I had I had five new good friends and it was it yeah. was really cool like guys that stayed true like fab and zach like it was uh it was a good time and dan was hilarious yeah so <laughs> we, we we had a good time i got a, i got a nice video of dan um muff diving at, <laughs> at the restaurant really <laughs> yeah yeah i so, think uh, your well? definition i think your definition <laughs> of muff diving is a lot different than my definition of muff diving. yeah yeah this one cost about <laughs> this one only cost about 13 bucks and nobody oh. got divorced over it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Hey, um, when, when we're done this, you're going to do a share screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Big time. Um, yeah. No, it, it's good. It's good, Eric, buddy. Like it, it really is. And, and you hit on, on something that's, it, it's hard to see nowadays. And, and, and this is me saying it, not, not that I'm, super experience or i'm lying in the tooth in in this world uh this waterfowl world um but it can be a very very cutthroaty world right where someone is just waiting for you to fucking to to screw up or or wait for their their opportunity to strike at you but yet um at the refuge you know you were there craig mints were there so that's two companies straight in competition with one another final approach was there final approach does silhouettes now and they and they've come out with stuff right and and everybody was everybody just understood their role like hey listen there's enough there's enough there for all of us um there is yeah and and you know what what some people i don't want to i got to be careful how i say this i don't want to downgrade your product and and that's not what i'm what i'm getting at but there's there's a product for everybody, right? Yeah. So so maybe people don't want to spend X number of dollars on on decoys, but or maybe they can't spend X number of dollars on decoys. But yet yeah. yours are coming in at a price point. Hey, fuck! I can afford these, and it gets me out yeah. hunting. And that and at the end of the day, as as a community, as a waterfowl hunting community, that we just need more people out hunting. Whatever 100%. that whatever that takes to get them out and and buying bird stamps and and eating those gas station burritos and and supporting all the fucking small businesses along the way, the gas stations yeah. and and hotels and restaurants and all that shit. That's what's important, right? Because we just yeah. need we need more people. We need more guys. We need more girls. We need more kids. Um, we need more people out and. And the refuge was a good example of of a group of people that were able to come together um, and and operate under one roof 
and still achieve their goals. And I, I think everybody, yeah. you know, unless people are lying to me, everybody had a great experience at the refuge. So um, I think everybody walked away fairly happy with, with what, with what they, when the show was over with what they left with. Right. And so for you yeah. um, again, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth or nothing, but for you as a new company, like you said, you didn't fucking know nobody. And you come in there and like I hazard to say, I don't think there was a more, maybe tiny goose, you and tiny goose, I would say was probably the two busiest, um, booths in the refuge. And that yeah. was just, that was just from me, from me walking around and, and seeing, you know what, like everybody, yeah. everybody was busy, but you and tiny goose and, and two new businesses, two new startups here in Ontario, yeah. um, doing their own thing. Right. So, and, it, and it's, it's awesome to see and Craig, Craig sort yeah. of touched on it. You know, it's gotta be scary. I know, like I didn't go in when I started, I didn't go in with the money that you've had to invest. And I know how scary it was for me. So I can't yeah. even fuck imagine how scary it is for you. Yeah. Uh, but you know, good on you, man. You're doing it, and yeah. and and you're doing your thing, and you're and you're not just pumping out crap. That's that's the important thing. You're not yeah. just pumping yeah. out something. I don't want to do that. I mean, I don't want to do the whole copy paste thing. Like like I said, I was just before. It's a goose is a goose. A picture of a goose is a picture of a goose. However, um, if you can do it a little bit of a, in a different style, and you can change things up a little bit, and that's what we're that's what we're here to do. Um, but the show was great. Like there was so much so much movement on on the friday like the friday blew me away and i was like damn tomorrow's gonna be different right because yeah. and then you you know you heard that the uh, parking at one point got shut down nobody to park and all that shit which and i'm sitting there like shit like this is gonna be this is gonna be amazing and we left i think with 13 boxes of decoys how many and did you come we, with we went with 78 i think it was Jesus, that's 78 a good... something wow. like that it was under 80 it was under 80 um, I think it was, it was 78 boxes. And... boxes. Yeah. 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 For, for a new guy. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and that's not an insult to you, but like, that's a, that's a new product on yeah. that's hitting the market and, and you sold, you know, 60 odd boxes, like Phil said, 60 yeah. odd boxes yeah. of, of, and we sold like, I don't know if you guys knew, but we sold some stuff. We had the, the funky flock. We were calling it, which was kind of like it was in our premium. Like it was, it was all the same decoys, but it was different quantities of different poses. It wasn't our typical poses, so we started selling that, and um, it was discounted a little bit. It was one hundred and ten bucks for a box of thirteen, and and guys who were there just adding numbers to their spread. They're like, oh yeah, I'll take that. I, I brought twenty of those, so it was actually seventy eight plus the twenty because I brought those on the Friday. I brought those on the Friday because I had to come home and get them. So. I guess it'd be more than that. I got to do the, I got to run the report and figure it out, but um, that was cool. And then we, you know, we sold the ducks and we sold out of ducks, which was pretty cool to see. And uh, that's awesome. We int introduced our fully flock stuff. If you guys didn't see that, that was fun. No, I seen that. Yeah. I can yeah. See that. So yeah, what, so terms. what without you giving away too, too much, you know, like what are you working on now? So like what's, what's, you know, what's keeping you at the drawing board right now that you're getting excited about, if you can talk about it. Yeah, no, we can, t I mean, so we're, we're getting into snow geese. Um, okay. We're getting into snow geese. The, um, the draw and the traction I've got out of Quebec came out of nowhere. I had of course. no clue what to expect out of that. And, and it's consistently guys reaching out, Hey, like I've got, you know, 10,000 decoys. I yep. want to add 3000 to it. And I'm thinking, where the fuck do you keep that? Yeah. <laughs> That's not an Eric problem. Yeah. No, it's not. It's no. not. As long as you got the finance, honey, I'll send it to you. I don't give a shit. Yeah, as long as you <laughs> got a mailbox. I'll yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So snow geese is coming, which is going to be fun. Uh, and socks, wind socks. Um, mm, in nice. terms of wind socks, I don't know if you guys ever shoot over them. Some guys yeah, love them. Some I, guys are like, no, don't touch them. No, I, you I, know. I like them. So and we're we're not over them, do... and I actually own them too. Mm. There you go. Okay, um, we're never gonna we're not gonna do the the standard, right? It's not gonna look like anybody else's sock. Um, we're changing the design, 
And so much so that it's been about a year of talking about these fucking wind socks. And I still have not got a finished prototype that I like. That's good, man. That's good that you're so, not rushing good. shit. Yeah, we're not doing it. I won't release I won't release a product that that I'm not proud of, right? Like everything that I've shown, I've been very proud of. And um I'm not going to do that with, with with the socks, right? If, if if it's not right, it's not right. So, I have a vision of what I want. I have a, a you know, a, the way it gets deployed is very important to me. The way it can get stored is very important to me. And the way you could you can assemble it because when when you when you get some of these and you got to put the screws in on the side i'm not doing that and i'll tell you a guy who's buying five thousand decoys he ain't doing that no so we're changing we're we're, you know we're working on a design for that which is pretty cool um and then we obviously have the hook and the extended hook and the floating hook bags um the waterproof bags are going to be changing a little bit and i like them but they're changing a little bit for the better yeah um We'll be adding some pouches and stuff where, you know, you'll be able to see your phone and slide it right in the front. So when the wife texts you and says, where the fuck are you? You can just decline. (laughs) (laughs) Make it easy. (laughs) Yeah. Brilliant. Um, We're working on some of that. We're we're changing our boxes. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it because uh, it's still in in, in its infancy, but in our next, in our next, uh, shipment we're going to have different boxes which are going to be very very cool um and the reason for is boxes are throwaway right now like when you get a box yeah. of decoys doesn't matter what box um you're going to take your decoys out you're going to take the box break it down throw it in the recycling bin our next boxes you're not going to do that with which is really I, cool i think i know what you're going to do because it's something that i've thought about uh why people don't do it so i i've got tell, tell me why you think people well, I think? think I think you're going to put a fucking pattering board on uh, on the inside of your box so you can pattern your gun. <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, fucking nailed it. There yeah. is an, uh, they, I have seen it. There's a fucking pizza yes. pizza joint that does that. It's like an yes. Alaska, I think. Yes, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Alaskan pizza fish. joint puts a and target sh- inside the lid. Yes, yeah. that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna have. Brilliant. Have Eric, I wanted to ask, like, what's the timeline? Like, how long ago did you like? first get the idea and start working on it. I probably started this. When was this? We launched it in September. We launched it in September. So it would have been about a year, about a year. So in September would have been about a year. Okay. So, so that's, just a, over year, that that's a year Seriously. from, sorry, Craig, I'm jumping in on you, but that's a year from you saying, you know what? Maybe, maybe we can do it. Maybe we uh, can do so. it. Maybe we can do it ourselves. That's you reaching out to a supplier, going through all your iterations on changes and shit to yep. where you had something that you were happy to hunt over about a year. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, and it, you know, it, it's been fun. It was kind of off and on. There was times where it was like, not lose the motivation, but like, I also have another job. Like I've got a salary yeah. job. I work every day and, and it's, it's timely. It takes a lot of time out of your life. Um, so yeah, it took a long time. There was times where like I didn't do anything for a week, right? Oh, and then there was times where it was like that's all I talked about was fucking ducks and ducks and geese, ducks and geese, ducks and geese. Well, you go on vacation from your paying job, yeah, to work at your non-paying job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I had to take two vacation days for the uh, for the sportsman show, which right. was hilarious. Right? Yeah. They're like, oh, like what are you doing? Uh, yeah, well, going to sell ducks. Duff. Going to sell pictures of ducks and geese, <laughs> I guess. Right? Right? Yeah. So. um no, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a wicked ride, and you know, as we touched on at the beginning, like we have we have competition, uh, we have local competition, we have competition that that's caused you know some confusion in the market with with names and stuff. And one thing that we've said is like we're gonna run our business how we're gonna run our business. I know, I know where we're gonna be in five years, and I know the path that I'm gonna take to do that. Yeah, and there's not a small company or a big company that's gonna kind of alter that like we're, we're we're focused on running our business and if i do what i think i'm going to do and i and i i partner with the right people and i work on the right products and i do the right thing for our business our our business will grow organically yeah. and yeah. we spoke to some people at the show and they were they loved it people were asking me after we were talking oh like can i be an ambassador right yeah. so it, it's yeah. nice it's then that was guys that was guys that 
actually got to spend half hour, 40 minutes chatting me, sh- chat with me, shooting the shit. And they, and those are guys I'm like, yeah, like that's the kind of person I'd want to bring on. So 100%. it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. No, it, it, it will. Nothing wrong. Didn't get built in the day, buddy. So no, um, it, no. it will come. Um, And just, just keep, you know, keep going the way you're going. Cause you're obviously like, you're you're doing things right and and by no means am i uh in any position to critique how you're running your business but from what i see it looks like you're doing everything fucking right because um you're selling product uh the one question i had will you is your plan and maybe you haven't even thought about this but is your plan to to remain direct to consumer or do you hope that someday you know, stores will pick up your product and then, you know, they'll be ordering in, you know, 500 dozen, uh, yeah. at the beginning of the year. And then they sell on your behalf. Like what, what's your plan there? So, so our thing with that is right now we're staying direct consumer. We had some, mm-hmm. some companies come and approach us at the show actually and ask us yeah. and, um, we, we'd be interested in that. And like, I think I would entertain it, but strategically, right. um, you know, we're based out of Hamilton. I don't need somebody in my postal code selling my own product. I also right. need, it comes to the whole integrity thing where I want to know about your business just as much as you want to know about mine. If you're going to mm-hmm. be selling it, well, I'm going to call your store 10 times in the yeah. course of a week. And if I don't, get, if that phone doesn't get picked up every single time, yeah. I'm not going to put my product in your store. And I've done that already in the last okay. couple of weeks since the show. And I haven't, the phone call has never been picked up. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of an interesting, an interesting thing is, and, and that's so, so my goal, is, and it, it reflects on me. If somebody goes to, goes to Bob's sporting supply because they sell our product and Bob doesn't pick up the phone mm-hmm. and, and Bob closes 10 minutes early on a Thursday, you know, yeah. it, it's, that's, you know, so, so we, we will entertain it i think strategically but right now with our website and it's like it's nice to have brick and mortar but at the same time our world during covid Mm -hmm. it went online so everyone's online that's buying this right so it doesn't hurt us to not be in a store could Mm -hmm. it increase our volumes yeah could it increase cash flow because a retailer is going to buy 500 dozen up front i'm going to get that cash up front and i can flip that and i can work with that as working capital yeah there's benefits to it but those are those benefits worth hinging my 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 business on? Because if you're not going to pick up the phone, yeah. right? They're not going to they're not going to go to you the next week to pick it up. They'll fucking just order it online. Yeah. So we thought about it, but we are staying in Canada. We will not ship our product to the states. Sorry okay. to all our American guys. And and the reason for that is that's kind of why we got into this to buy a box of most of the guys that come out of the states. It's higher exchange yeah. shipping duties gets to your door. My mom, a couple of years ago, she bought me um, some decoys and it was $320 for a dozen by the time it got to her doorstep. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? So our goal is to keep it in Canada, Canada only. Um, we've had one guy reach out that wants some in the States and we've just said, you know, and it was an opportunity that would have, could have yeah. helped the business financially very, very quickly. And we declined it. Yeah. So we'll see, you know, we'll see what the future brings. But as of right now, like we're, you know, we're staying on the websites, but we might look at stuff like, um, you know, out East, right. And Peterborough or like Quebec areas where it makes sense to maybe have a retailer. Right. Because it's expensive for us to ship there. And and we don't want to put that customer, that burden on the customer. If it makes sense logistically for the customer and the business, then yeah. If it only makes sense for me, it doesn't make sense for you. Then I don't, yeah. you're not, you know what I mean? It's was, gotta be. Uh, I was going to mention this when you brought up, uh, that you had some interest from Quebec. Um, there's, there's a Facebook group at a Quebec called black sky waterfowl. And, uh, they were talking about your product on there this week. Yeah. And, and now oh, this it, I did not seen that one. Uh, yeah, it was either this, maybe it was last week, but anyway, like I saw was, one, like, like a month ago, somebody oh, sent no, it no, to no. me and they were like, no, yeah, no, okay. this was, this was like last week or at the beginning okay. of this week and they were talking about it and my French is as good as what my English is. Um, so I, I had no idea what they were saying. Um, <laughs> it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad though. You know what I mean? Like it, it was, yeah. Hey, it was, 
I'm paraphrasing, but it was sort of kind of along the lines like, hey, guys, check this out. This is a new decoy company um, yeah. out of Ontario, and and this guy had product. So he... he okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, he had... He yeah, was we've saying, shipped. We've shipped tons there. And it yeah. and it was like that. Like, overnight, one night, it was like, I wake up in the morning, I get our website report, and it's like, you have six new orders. And I'm going through the addresses because I'm wondering how much it's going to cost to ship. And it's Quebec, 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 Quebec. And I'm like, what the yeah, fuck I'm happened right. in Quebec? Did they, yeah. did they get a new hunting season? I don't understand. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah, Absolutely but, wild. But that just goes to show what word of mouth. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want, really, right? Like, you can be on mm -hmm. social media. You can dump all kinds of money into marketing. And I'm not saying that it's not worth it and, and all that stuff. But if you... If you can get a product into somebody's hands that another person trusts their judgment, then then yeah. you're in, right? Because yeah, that's a, that's how it starts, right? It's it's one dude that, hey, listen, if 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 Phil tells me this is a good product, well, I'm gonna go yeah. buy it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and that's yeah. that's probably what's gonna happen with you, you know, with Quebec and any other province that you get into. Now it'll be yeah. someone that'll say. Hey, listen, I tried these. They're awesome and they're a good price yeah. and, and the whole bit. And then we've got that's uh, how it starts. So these are our new new. New new. You can see never here. Never seen before. Never seen. Never seen, seen before. First so time on the Webernet. See oh, the yeah. uh the yeah. feather details? Yeah. So that's gonna be on all of our decoys in the future. That's yeah. obvi obviously we had to create some more <clears throat> differentiating factors if you know what i'm saying yeah um so that was a quick one that that we did that we put that together and, and so that's going to help separate us i think too but also just provide a better a nicer looking decoy i think moving forward and we're not going to have 10 different options I, right. we're going to keep this small and, and, and simple so uh the kiss method is keep it simple stupid yeah so we're going to have one skew and as we develop it as it gets better we'll you know it's just yeah. going to be the new standard it's not going to be you know, there's there's always the Econo series, if you will, for I think every every company has a non flocked whatever. Um we might do it. I'm not certain if we'll do that. Um right. I really like the idea of only having flocked heads. I love that. Um, hey, listen, Dave Smith don't have a Econo series and he's doing exactly. just and yeah. he's doing just fucking fine. Yeah. So. Man, those decoys are wicked, eh? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Apples to oranges. I, I yeah. had I had a lot of guys come up and be like, oh, like, why don't you do hard bodies? And you know Dave Smith, I go, Yeah, but he does it different. That <laughs> and that's just there's a lot there's different. A lot different. Like yeah. just fucking fantastic decoys. And um well, I hope that Dave's we're turkey decoys. Doing the same. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 They're different. They were because yeah. they, they were at uh, CWS, right? They had yeah. them in the booth there. I think, yeah. and I yeah. I saw a lot of the, a lot of those walk out of the show the other day, and mm -hmm. I was I was I I didn't pick one up. I should have because I can't find my uh, believe it or not, I can't find my decoys in this shit show. <laughs> there's my there's my hand. That's so, awesome. Anyways, well, um, you know we are yeah. getting we are getting close to that hour mark, boys. Um, we're and, actually over. Well, we're yeah we're over just a little bit, Whatever, but a little um. Bit. But this would be a good, this is a good chance now, like anything, any last minute stuff. So anything that you want to get out there, Eric, that, that you haven't had a chance to tell people in already, or then even for Mark, Phil and, and Craig, if there's anything that you're curious about, like now would be the time to, uh, to ask those questions, right? Yeah. I, I have questions, questions? Comments. I got yeah. questions, comments, concerns, but they're going to be offline. Oh yeah. Okay. There you go. Ooh, those are fun. I ones. Actually, I actually I I talked to the Toronto Sportsman Show general manager today, and I got a couple points to put off that we'll talk about offline as well. It's too early yeah. to talk yeah, about them online. Um, yeah. Mark Craig, you guys got anything? No, I just wanted to say uh, it was really cool to kind of hear your thoughts on things and your process, and and uh, that you like the idea of focusing on the products that you want to do well. So I think a lot of companies, and not just in the waterfowl industry, just in general, they try to get too many things going on, too many SKUs, and you end up with a whole bunch of things that none of them are good. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, really cool to kind of hear your background on it and your outlook on things and your approach to it. So, yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, good meeting, Eric. Uh, you got a 
good positive vibe about your company. And I hope through the ups and downs and in, in the time to come, you can maintain that because nothing ever goes perfect all the time. But uh, That's right. I hope through it all that it works out for you. You got some good product going, coming out. And uh, from what I see, it's some original stuff, which is can be refreshing in the waterfowl world. So, yeah. Uh, I wish you all the best with that. Oh, I appreciate well, I, it, boys. No, it's great. And I think that, and I think that's what Merck. Um, I think that's what people that have been, again, people that have been lying in the tooth in this chasing birds as a passion. I think that's what people are looking for now, right? They're not looking for the wheel to be invented uh, again. They just, hey, listen, this works, but but we could tweak it to make it work better. Um, and, and that's, that's the thing. I think that's what yeah. a lot of people are looking forward to. Right. And, and, a, and it's a lot of the reason why you're getting the success that you're getting right now is because you're not trying to, you know, flip the world upside down. You're just making some subtle changes that, you yeah. know, makes life easier for you. So if it makes life easier for you nine times out of 10, it'll make it life easier for me. Um, Absolutely. right. So, um, but yeah, a quick around the table. Mark sort of kind of did his, but uh, you know, we'll go quick around the table. We'll give the last word to Eric, and then we'll uh, we'll close this episode off. Phil, Eric, absolute pleasure to have you on. Like I've been talking to talking to your buddy Jamie for quite some time about uh, who's this new guy that you're pushing and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, he's had nothing but the best of words uh, about yeah. you know, your your endeavor and whatnot. And he speaks the world of you and your product, and that's. Coming from Jamie, I know that's it's a solid voice. I know. <laughs> yeah. well, speak, yeah. Speaking from Jamie's point of things, yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, wish you nothing but the best. It's awesome seeing like you know someone come that's like it's this is going to be Canadian, Canadian only. You know, like, obviously there's companies in the states that are states and states only, whatever. And, like and being living here yeah. in Ontario, we get screwed on the daily shipping shit, whatever the case may be. Um, I. Did get a small peek at your bags, like your waterproof bags at the show. Really interested to see how those develop because, like, being yeah. like a like an actual like water waterfowl hunter, like I do a lot of water hunting and stuff. Yeah, obviously keeping shit dry is uh, essential. So I'll be really to see how uh, that product line. Of, yep. uh, your stuff develops. We'll, and- we'll get some into your hands when, when we get our when we get them finalized. After these changes, we'll get a bag in your hands and go test awesome. it and bring it out to the real world. So, yeah, it'll, it'll get used and abused and then it'll probably lost and broken and get lied about. Perfect. <laughs> well, <laughs> or, it, it, it goes it goes with the nature of my job. Well, I, or, <laughs> break you it, could get we'll a, lose it, and then we'll lie about it. You could get a new decoy bag and then me and Mark could come and, and make sure we put <laughs> bloody geese all over. <laughs> well, I, I sold one of those already, thank God. Yeah. That's awesome. Brand spanking new buddy. silo bags. I turn around, and there's 15 bloody guys, goose guys goose complaining blood. about getting goose blood. Beautiful. Out of fucking decoy. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't even deserve them. Great right to you, buddy. Yeah, no, nothing else to add. Again, just really cool to hear, hear uh, your perspectives and insights and just kind of your process throughout it. So, and, and yeah, uh, great, great chat with you. You too, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Mark, you got anything else, buddy? No, I'm waiting for the video. <laughs> to you eric buddy finish her off guys i was super stoked to be to, to be honest and chat with you guys it's been awesome and be given a platform like yours damien to, to talk to you guys and get our brand out and, and reinforce our you know our values our brand values and our brand equity and what we're doing in the future and our brand ambassador program that may come down the line um it, it's it's been uh it's been great man i appreciate you guys having me on and it's been great chatting with you for sure, no, but uh, absolutely, and and thank you for taking some time and hanging out with us. Um, because uh, let's face it, we're not everybody's cup of tea, and uh, and you know what, I'm I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna say I think Craig is doing all right on the show. I think Craig is. I think he's fitting in pretty good. He's doing it. He's doing it. <laughs> he's got a couple of weeks left on his probationary period. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll he's not in. The, well. Actually, we got to talk about this as probationary period because he sent a fucking message out the other day. I think next week he's not coming on the show, right? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, no, take no, a break. No, yeah he's, got, much, he's got he's got something he's got something more important to do than to come hang out and chat with us. Apparently, two days in, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two shows in. God damn I, it! I, 
Fucking union workers. Yeah, I remember, I'm a government employee. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't hey. know whether to call him a half miler or a part timer. <laughs> hey, listen, I done 20 years in the government. I know how hard the fucking government works. So it's stuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do want. I I've got to get this little shot in, and I've been saving this to get this shot in at Phil for the entire show. So. Everybody, you've seen me, anybody that was watching the episode tonight, you've seen me smoking another cigar. The same one that I had last week, but my good friend James, and I'm not going to say his last name because I absolutely butchered it last week, and, and Rob Borg and James actually messaged me well, laughing. Hey, we can't fuck up his company name. Got to bite. Got they to make wicked salmon lures, salmon yeah. flies. Check is, that shit out. Yeah. Got if you to like fishing for salmon. You yeah. didn't fuck it up, but they knew it. Yeah. 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 I probably would have. Um so so the little the little dig is is that James um bought me some cigars from the cigar shop or the ones that I like and sent them to me. So same as the one that you have that you haven't tried yet, Phil. And he said, uh, make sure you let Phil know that while you're sitting here enjoying a nice cigar, he's still got that eighteen and a half foot boat in storage. So I was like I What's can storage? It. I can do, I can do that. Well, it's not in the fucking water. Is what I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's sitting in the driveway. Yeah, it's not in the water. That's that's so the point. water doesn't count. Ladies hey, and gentlemen, this out of boat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. well played. Fuck, you're on fire tonight, Phil. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> two for um, two. Two for two. Everybody, this is Union Zero Four Thirty, uh, episode one seventy nine. We are not experts, and we'll never pretend to be experts. We're a group of friends that love hanging out, talking anything duck hunting, and uh, we get to bring some pretty cool guests on the show as well. So big love. Surround yourself with good people. Check out the decoy daddy. I promise you, um, I promise you, you will be happy with, with what you see, um, and that I'm confident of. Um, big love. Surround yourself with good people. Until next week.